You'll find street food perfection in Hanoi where they make bun cha. Now at its very basic, it's spiced and chopped pork patties served with rice noodles and vegetables. So tasty, especially when it's tossed with a little bit of nook cham, that's lime juice and fish sauce. A great, great combination. Speaking of great and combination, mm -hmm. we've got Julia here and she's gonna show us how to make this amazing food at home. Yes, starting with the nook cham, All right. which is that classic Vietnamese condiment. They use it as a dressing, they use it as a marinade. Mm -hmm. It's often just on the table next to the salt and pepper. It should be. And we have to make it. <laughs> All right. And now luckily it's pretty easy. As you said, it's fish sauce and lime juice. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they add a little bit of garlic and chili to the sauce and that's where we're gonna start with this Thai chili. It's little, but it packs a punch. Now we're gonna use the whole chili because you and I like spicy food. Mm -hmm. Didn't like such spicy food, I'd only use about half. Okay. And we're just gonna take the stem off, we're gonna mince it and include the seeds. I'm gonna put it in this mortar and pestle because we're gonna grind it to a fine paste so that its flavor really distributes evenly through the sauce. All right, so just a little. And it's such a small amount, you don't wanna get out the food processor. No, Got not it. at all. All right, next we're gonna add a little garlic. I find it easier to mash it to a paste if you just put it through a garlic press first. So through the press, right into the bowl. Last but not least, a tablespoon of sugar. That's just gonna give it some grit so we can really mash it down. So now, if you didn't have this mortar and pestle, of course you could use a board and you could use the side of your knife to get it down to a nice fine paste. Oh, you can really start to smell that chili as its oils start to work its way into the sugar. So here, I'm gonna get all this beautiful chili sugar garlic paste out of this and into a bowl so we can finish making our sauce. All right. So we're gonna add a little more sugar, that's two more tablespoons of sugar, because this is a sweet and spicy sauce. And to help that sugar dissolve, we're gonna add two thirds of a cup hot water. I'm just gonna mix this together, make sure that sugar gets dissolved and all that flavor gets nice and evenly distributed. Now we're gonna finish the nook cham with some fish sauce. It's five tablespoons of fish sauce and four tablespoons of lime juice. And there is our nook cham that would make cardboard taste good. <laughs> This stuff is amazing. I really, I put this on everything. All right, now it's time to move on down and cook off the noodles, which is a key part of this dish. And we're using thin rice vermicelli. Bring some water to a boil. And these only cook for about four minutes. No salt in here because okay. the sauce is salty enough. We're gonna go in there with some tongs, make sure we break them up as they soften and let them go. All right, so we're gonna let those cook for a few minutes. Meanwhile, we're gonna get our platter ready because this is a dish you drop on the table to serve to a group of people and people can kind of pull what they like off the platter. And what I love about this is there's a ton of fresh, crisp vegetables and green and herbs that are a nice counterpart to those noodles and the pork. So this is some bib lettuce, which is nice and buttery. We're just gonna tear this up into bite-sized pieces. And there's different ways you can build the platter. I like to build it so you can kind of reach it from either side of the table. So that's about an eight ounce head of Boston bib. Okay. I'm gonna set this aside. Cucumbers are a key part of this dish. So this is one long English cucumber. We're just gonna quickly peel it. So I'm just gonna trim the ends off of these and I'm gonna cut it lengthwise. And now there aren't a lot of seeds in here, but the little bit of seeds that are there are very watery, mm -hmm. especially when you cut them up. So we're gonna get rid of them just using a soup spoon. Just gonna scrape them out. So now I'm just gonna take each of these and cut them a half again. So they're nice seedless quarters. And now we're gonna cut them on the bias into nice pretty pieces. Add these to the platter, a little pile on each side. All right, so now I'm just gonna take cilantro and fresh mint. It's about a cup of each. And you can see I've left the stems on because the stems have a very sweet flavor and they work well in this dish. Yeah, it's beautiful. And now for some mint, we're gonna put the mint leaves again on each side. I'm just gonna tear them up into big rustic pieces. So I'm just gonna keep this nice and fresh in the refrigerator until we're ready to eat. Sounds good. So let's talk a little bit about rice noodles. Now they come in all different varieties, but you can usually find two different kinds at the supermarket. There's the rice sticks, which are very, very flat. They can be as wide as pepperdelli or nice and skinny like linguine. Now these are great for stir fried dishes like a pad thai or if you're making a pho at home. And on the other hand, we have rice vermicelli, and these also come in different widths. You have angel hair pasta, really, really skinny guys, and then up to spaghetti whip. These are actually round in shape, and the rice vermicelli is what we're using today. All right, so it's been about four minutes. I'm gonna turn the heat off, because these noodles, when they go, they go fast. Just like that. Mm -hmm. And there's only one way to really tell if a noodle's done, and that is to eat it. <laughs> mm, perfect. Just has a little bit of bite left on the inside, and that is just right. All right, so now we're gonna drain these. 
because this is a cold salad, we're gonna chill the noodles down, which does two things. One, you can serve them cold, but two, it stops the cooking and sets the starches, so they maintain their structure. Yeah, they really do firm up once they start to chill down. Mm -hmm. And I'll shake them off a bit. I'm gonna put them on a plate and let them dry a little bit further before we serve it. Just spread them out. All right, we're gonna let those cool down. And now we're gonna get to the main event, the pork patties, finally. <laughs> I'm gonna start with the seasonings. This is one minced shallot. This is a little more fish sauce, just a tablespoon. Some sugar. There's a little sugar sprinkled throughout this because it's very spicy and fishy, and that's the balance to those two flavors. That's right. So that's a teaspoon and a half of sugar. We have half a teaspoon of pepper. And last, we have our secret ingredient. It is baking soda, which will help the meat brown, but also help keep those pork patties nice and moist. Half a teaspoon of baking soda. We're just gonna make sure all these seasonings are well combined. Now, traditionally, they use pork belly to make this. Mm -hmm. It's right. kind of difficult to cook. So we just went right to the ground pork, which really delivered a very similar flavor, but 10 times easier. So this is a pound of ground pork. I'm just gonna sprinkle it into the bowl and really toss this all around. Time to make some patties. Okay. Now we're gonna make nice little patties. They grill fast and they're easy to eat. Because we're making 12 patties, you want them to be the same size so that they grill at the same rate. So those are four even piles. I'm gonna take a pile and divide it into three patties so that each patty is about the same size. That's 12 patties. So they're gonna be about half an inch thick and about two and a half inches wide. You can see I'm just using my palms. I'm pressing it flat mm -hmm. and using my thumb. This is how I make hamburgers too. Me too. To, is it? Mm -hmm. to use your thumb to just round the edges. Make a perfect little patty, there you go. We're gonna make the rest of these patties and then we're gonna head out to the grill and heat it up. All right, Bridget, so I have this grill that's been heating up for about five minutes. So that was a full chimney, about six quarts of charcoal, and I let it heat up and I put it on just half of the grill because we really want to cook these through quickly and get some good char. I'm just scraping any cooked on gunk off the grill now that it's nice and hot. All right. Next, rub the grill grates with vegetable oil. Now it's time to grill. Good. It is as simple as you can imagine. We're gonna put these over the coals. We're gonna let these cook for about three to four minutes on this first side. We're looking for a really lovely char. Flip it over, three to four minutes on the second side. All right, so it's been about four minutes. Time to take a look. Gorgeous uh, color. Yeah. It's really hard to get something this small, get cooked through and get that char, which is why we have to have such a hot fire. So we're just gonna flip them all over and cook them again for another three to four minutes on the second side. All right, so it's been on the second side for about three minutes. Ooh, you can see nice and gorgeous and brown. So you always get a bit more browning on that first side, but that's to be expected. So they are done, and this is where the magic happens. <laughs> we're gonna put the hot meat right into the bowl of nuak cham, mm -hmm. and this, we're gonna turn them over as we put them in. So the meat juices are gonna immediately go into the sauce. The sauce is gonna get absorbed by the meat patties, and it's gonna be amazing. This is the trick to making this dish. And we're gonna let them sit there for about five minutes. All right, so these have rested in their nook chom for about five minutes, and it is eating time. The char from the exterior. Awesome. You can see the color of this nook chom has really changed thanks to all those pork juices. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna save this, of course, this is very valuable, as a condiment when we're eating. I've got a straw. <laughs> <laughs> all right, may I build you a plate? I would love that, thank all you. All right, so I'm gonna start with some noodles. I'm gonna give you two nice pork patties and then just a whole bunch of this mm. love on the side. Mm. Some cucumbers in there. And would you like a little sauce on top? I would love yeah. some sauce, please. I love putting it right on the pork mm -hmm. to really help get those pork juices down into the noodles and a little on the salad. I'm going right for the pork. All right, me too. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. It just has so much flavor. So juicy. I love that little bit of sweetness in there too. It's perfect because here comes the heat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just a little. Julia, this is excellent. Isn't it good? It's sultry, spicy, sour, sweet, salty, stupendous. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you'd like to make bun cha at home, it all starts with a nok chom. Grind Thai chili, garlic, and sugar, then stir in hot water, fish sauce, and lime juice. Assemble your salad greens while you boil rice vermicelli noodles. Then mix up some shallot fish sauce, baking soda, and ground pork. Shape the patties, then grill them until charred. 
Soak the patties in that beautiful sauce and serve with lettuce, cucumber, herbs, and those noodles. So from our test kitchen to your kitchen, the extraordinary, stupendous, and now it's disappearing, Buen Cha, or Vietnamese grilled pork patties with rice noodles and salad. And while I said that, you ate half of yours. Mm -hmm. Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later. <laughs>